school students are 17 now, 17, and 100% remote, we're at 104, and hybrid, we're at 614. We go to one. Awesome. All right, so I'm calling tonight's meeting to order. Mm -hmm. It is Thursday, October 1st, and tonight is the school board regular meeting. So I please have the uh, attendance. Ms. Durgan. Ms. Durgan. Here. Mrs. Skiptos. Here. Dr. Gill. Here. Ms. Casalonis. Here. Ms. Layton. Here. Mrs. Sither. Here. Mrs. Turner. Here. And Mr. Bennett. Here. And if you could please uh, join me with a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, I do have a couple of adjustments to tonight's agenda. We're going to re be moving items 10.3 through 10.7, this is the first readings of the policies to our next board meeting. Are there any others? Okay. Seeing none, public comments on tonight's agenda items. I have one. Okay. Thanks, Nick. You're welcome. Um, so my name is Nicholas Gill. Even though I was just introduced, I live at 213 Pleasant Hill Road and I speak tonight as a citizen of Scarborough. Although the board has adjusted tonight's agenda and tabled the first reading of several policies related to harassment and discrimination, I feel the need to address the board, the district, and our community as a proud Scarborough native and concerned citizen. When I say community, I'm speaking not just of Scarborough, but of Maine, our country, and the world. We often speak of our schools as one of the crowning jewels of our beloved town, and we are finding out now with each passing day just how crucial education and enlightenment are. We are living through a pivotal moment in history, one that I'm sad to say is not unique to our generation. More than 150 years ago at the conclusion of the Civil War, we saw what you could call the official end of legal white supremacy. However, it took another 100 years of struggle and discrimination for our country to pass the Civil Rights Bill, again trying to drive a stake through the heart of superiority based on skin color. As, in it, as if that was not enough, this repetitive historical trend has threads that pass through gender, sexual orientation, religion, and essentially any scenario where the rights of one group are usurped in order to bolster the privileges of another. Today, as I speak these words, part of me fears for our students and staff of color. I fear for the LGBT community of which I am a proud member. And I fear for the rights of women, all in light of what we heard on the global stage Tuesday night. We watched in horror as the President of the United States refused to denounce white supremacy and instead called for said activists to stand back and stand by. These alarming words of fascism seem to have more in common with 1939 than they do with 2020, yet despite our disbelief, we are here living in this day. We can write about it on Facebook, we can talk about it in our living rooms, but what can we really do to move our society forward? We can learn. Education has been defined as an enlightening experience founded on the notion that when we know better, we do better. The policies set by this board and the resulting changes mobilized by our school district will allow all students to learn in a safer environment. One where their energy and strength are available for learning rather than defending against prejudice and ignorance. It's not about politics liberal or conservative right or left blue or red. It's about the future of humanity and what type of society we want our descendants to learn about one day when they're in school. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Check to make sure. All right, no other comments? Moving into the superintendent's report. Thank you, Leanne. Uh, as usual, I will start off with our enrollment numbers. We'll look a little differently this year, just because I've uh, broken it out with homeschool, remote, and hybrid numbers as well. 
it's okay. I like to go from left to right, starting with the high school. Currently, um, the October 1 count this year, we're at 959. Last year at the high school, we're at 988. We currently have three homeschool children at the high school, 89 students remote, and 870 a hybrid. We scroll down to the middle school. Currently, we have 718 students. Last year, we had 696. Homeschool students are 17, now, 17. and 100% remote, we're at 104. And hybrid, we're at 614. We go to Wentworth School. Currently, our numbers are 636. Last year, 664. Homeschool students, number 16 being homeschooled. 100% remote, 77. And hybrid, 559. Blue Point School, currently, we're at 202 students. Last year, very close. 203 students. Homeschool, if you cluster Blue Point, Eight Corners, and Pleasant Hill, we have 33 homeschool students, again, K through 12. Back to Blue Point, when we look at the remote numbers, we have 38, and hybrid, we have 164. As we look at Eight Corners, this year we're at 224. Last year, 243 homeschool, again, K through 12, 33. Our remote, 54 students at eight corners and hybrid, 107. Pleasant Hill, currently 189 students. Last year, 205. Remote, 37. And hybrid, 152. We total these up. This year, our grand total for enrollment at October 1st is 2,928. Last year, it was 2,999. Homeschool students, total of 69. Total, 100% remote, 399. And hybrid, total, 2,529. That's our October enrollment. Thank you. Go on to the next slide. And this is an update um, as far as our school department and communication tool um, to ensure all staff and students and their families are informed about the latest happenings in the district. Scarborough School System is excited to announce their new communication tool, their weekly newsletter. This is emailed home every Friday and it's an opportunity for people to understand what's going on in the district. It's also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I also like to report that we have transitioned into incorporating all schools into this newsletter, and our deadline is in October to have that happen. So we're very excited about this. I have to uh, give kudos to particularly Diane and Monique in my office. They have been very much instrumental behind this work. And I think it's paying off uh, tremendously. So thanks to everybody who's been involved with this. If you go to the next slide. So we've had a great transition to the school. Um, I really appreciate everybody's involvement. The parents have been incredibly helpful. Of course, our staff, we could not do this work without the staff and the administrative team. And so I just, as a reminder, and I know people know this, but I think we can't say this enough when we talk about daily screening and self-assessment. Um, again, I think we're doing a very good job with this, but I, every opportunity that we can reinforce this, I think it's, uh, a good practice. So within the past 24 hours, um, if you have had a fever, uh, certainly we would want you to make sure that you let your school know that. Um, again, if you feel sick and you have any of these symptoms up in the left hand corner, whether you have a cough or a fever or you're vomiting, or your muscles are aching, any of those symptoms, 
we just really encourage you to stay home. And certainly you can call the school and explain that your child has these symptoms. This is just, again, for us to build awareness. I think people have done a very good job with this so far. But again, we just want to reinforce. So if anybody isn't aware of this information, that they are having the opportunity tonight to hear more about this. Um, I also just want to say before we go on to the next slide, that our nursing staff has been absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. They, they, I know everybody has been on um, overhaul with just doing all the work that they've had to do over the summer and this fall. But these people are really on the front line with staff and students who may have those symptoms and uh, we could not do this work without their expertise. So I appreciate that proactive approach and uh, certainly um, appreciate the fact that we have enough nurses on site and we're very fortunate because a lot of districts might not have the number of nurses within their district that we have. Uh, next slide, please. So what has come out this week, and I just wanted to kind of plant the seed. I think it's important that people know that COVID-19 testing an announcement came from DOE. And in the first bullet, it talks about rapid testing. COVID-19 could be available in our K-12 schools for districts who choose to opt in. Secondly, the state of Maine will receive the test kits and instruction on its use. Again, nationally, this is being delivered to all schools. DOE will provide training through webinars and resources. The Binax Now test will be used for early detention, detection of COVID-19 specifically for students, staff, and teachers who develop signs and symptoms. As you know now, if a student feels or a teacher feels that they have the symptoms, they have to arrange to uh, go and get tested outside of the school system. What, are this, what they are suggesting here is if school systems want to opt in, and we have not made a decision at this point in time, because it just came out this week and we need to digest this and make sure it makes sense. But the test allows nasal swap samples directly using a dual nostril collection. So that's the, how we would have this happen with our students and staff. Students over the age of 12 can certainly do this themselves under the supervision of our nurses. Of course, we would need consent form. Parent guardian would be important to have that on hand. Um, and in addition, we would have training would be available on the guidelines and the use of Abbott by NACS now tests. Again, this informa information just came out. Um, Diane and I were on a webinar today with DOE just trying to hear the good questions and begin to understand this whole um, plan if indeed we want to go this route. I've also been in contact with area superintendents and um, everybody is just kind of beginning to have the conversation with their own staff within the district. And so I think this will be a topic that we'll hear more about. I just wanted to float it tonight so people know that it's an option um, and we'll continue to learn and think if indeed, if we want to go this route, uh, we would want to make sure that we set it up well and uh, proceed accordingly. I do think there is a date, I'm not mistaken, October 8th is when um, I think a decision would have to be made on this. So we would ask the board, if indeed we went this way, that we would appreciate a board vote on this as well. So I don't want to overwhelm people, but I don't want to hide information. And I just wanted to put that slide out today because um, I think it's just something that we need to think about and consider. Um, before we move on from this to the next piece, Sandy, Yes. I know there's a couple of hands up and I have got questions like crazy. Right. Um, I know that it's new. I, I appreciate the fact that the DOE did send this out. I think the turn is really fast. 
um, given the fact that we would definitely need to have a special meeting for the board to adopt this as an option. Um, I guess my question is, are they talking about this being across the board that all students and staff would be tested or only when they weren't feeling well when they or if they wanted it? It's when they have the symptoms or if they come in and feel like they have a headache or a cough or whatever. Um, I think the key here, and Diane, I'll refer to you, but I think the key here is to make sure we have the infrastructure to do this, that we have the capability of, of testing students. And we haven't even really looked into that at this point in time in detail. Diane? Yeah, I was just going to say, so a couple of pieces. Um, one is uh, on the webinar that we were watching this afternoon, although the opt-in date is October 9th, um, they will allow school districts uh, to wait to make a decision um, and to uh, sign on at a later date um, if, if people are not comfortable making a decision. Again, as Sandy said, we're really at the early stages of collecting as much information as we can. Um, I did have a chance yesterday to meet initially with the school nursing staff um, and Dr. Fanberg about this. Although, um, you know, I'll be honest, it was our first conversation and, and I was really upfront with them in saying that um, we're not taking a position on this at, at this point in time, that we're really trying to just educate ourselves and get enough information um, about the pros and the cons of, of thinking about doing this as a district. All right, I have another question, but I'm gonna, both Nick and Sarah have their hands up, so I'm gonna defer and let them talk and then come back. So Nick, yours has been up for a little bit. Sure, um, my question actually goes back to the enrollment numbers, but actually I do wanna comment on this, which is um, when I saw this information come out, I've actually been doing a little bit of digging around to understand the Binax Now test. My, my last, my first career was in biotechnology as I know April's was. So actually, I, I'm actually pretty familiar with a lateral flow test, which is what this is. Um, I think what's really exciting about this is that it's an antigen test as opposed to an antibody test. So you're really looking at early results. According to Abbott's own website, results are available in 15 minutes with no special instrumentation. This is analogous to what IDEX calls their SNAP test, but I won't go down that road. Um, it's a lateral flow test. It's read on site, 15 minutes. Um, what I was really concerned about when I first saw it was there's been some, there had been some I'll call them preliminary rumors about um, accuracy. And so I did some digging on that. And what I found was that Abbott's reporting a 97.1% sensitivity with this test, which is the statistic that guards against false negative results and an even higher 98.5% specificity, which in my opinion is, could be more alarming if that number was low because that's false positives, telling someone they're positive when they're not. Um, so those numbers are very encouraging and it, it's exciting to see the Department of Ed getting this in the hands of the school districts because this could really be great on the site triage for our health professionals in the schools. Um, you know, so I, it's really exciting to see that coming through and from one of our main companies. Um, so with that said, because I did some research on this, uh, my actual question was going back to the enrollment numbers and for anyone that's looking at those new, um, the way that those metrics are formatted now, Sandy, I think the way I understood it is that the last two columns added together um, connected with the first column? In other words, we're not counting the homeschooled students in our in our counts, right? So right. it's just okay. That's what I wanted to check because there's there was a lot of data there, and I know people can numbers. Some people just don't like numbers, and I live and breathe them. So I just wanted to to make sure I was right on that. So thank you, Sarah. Yeah, I just had a question, and maybe we don't know this yet, just around um, sort of budget for this and where would this be provided by the state or would this be covered by the town? My understanding is it would be paid by the state, yes. They're actually okay. coming from the federal government. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, my other question really has to do with going back to policies and procedures. Would we need to have all of those in place before we could agree to this? Um, and did the state provide any sort of 
framework or guidelines for us to work through? I think that's a really good question, Leanne. Um, and I think probably you're on to something that should be looked at with the policies. Um, I have not heard that. Maybe Diane has heard about that, but I've not heard anything about that in just where I've been in my circles. So in regards to um, you know what the state um, would provide, they would be providing all of the consent, consent forms. They would be training people in all the protocols and so on and so forth. Um, you know, I know that there there are um, many questions uh, that are are circling around, not just here in Scarborough, but throughout the state in regards um, to us making sure that we could do this safely and not, um, you know, absolutely not put our nurses at any greater risk. Um, but, you know, I think some of the things that are still questions that need to be thought through, um, which is why we haven't taken a position on this yet, would be um, in regards to standing orders, um, because nurses operate under a certain license, um, the, how this all fits within their scope of practice um, and their um, ability to diagnose because again, they would be making a decision as to when um, they felt a student should receive a test and, and would there be any liability around that? And, and those are the same questions that are coming up around the state um, and, and were part of the webinar that we were watching today. So I think those are really important issues for us to take into account um, as we also um, look at the benefits, right? So it really is a cost benefit analysis in terms of um, not a financial cost, but um, you know, those other pieces that I've mentioned. And again, sorry, I'm asking like a million questions. It's just, it's very fascinating, um, but I'm really glad that we're looking at this eyes wide open before we go any further. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll go on to the next slide. So certainly kudos to the town. Um, as you know, the uh, Corona relief funds came our way where the school and the town could work together to look at alternative childcare on days that students may be learning remotely. And so um, through a grant, which was funded, I'm just here to report uh, uh, Todd Sousa has provided this information. Uh, we've been really heavily involved in setting up this program, but I felt it was important to, again, to reinforce to our community what is going on with the daycare program. And it's going to start on October 5th for students in grades K through five. As you know, the former House of Lights, uh, they are renting that space and certainly they're trying to reconfigure the space to meet the CDC and DOE guidelines. So that will be the location for this program. And it's going to be full days, 7 to 6 p.m. for each cohort. We have a two-day two or three-day option. And students will have access to certainly a daily breakfast and lunch right through December 31st. And the program recently offered to grade six students that just came out and it's limited to 10 spaces for each cohort. And that program will begin on October 13th. So again, that's the latest information that I have. And I just think that'd be important to, again, to reinforce that this is a great option for our community members. And if you have more information, certainly you can call community services and they will be happy to uh, answer any questions that you have. In addition to that, um, as a school department, we really try to pony up any materials, uh, desk chairs, adult tables, cubby shelving, um, plexiglass shields, fluorescent lights. We've actually uh, loaned our box trucks so they can move the furnishings uh, to the new site. So um, Todd Jepson, who is our facilities director, has been more than willing to assist and we really appreciate the partnership in working with the town on this. 
Oh, lots of hands up. Um, April? Uh, I just wanted to let everyone know this was part of my liaison report, but since Sandy had some slides prepared, I, I think it's probably timely to say this now that Paul Johnson, the town council chair, had reached out to me as liaison and has um, an open invitation basically to anyone on the board who would like to tour the facility. Um, and so if that is something that you are interested in doing, um, he certainly has their safety in mind and limiting visitors. So it would be after hours, um, but you can connect with me. And um, if so, if anyone would like to see the facility, um, feel free to let me know. Yes, please. They also posted a really cool video on some site that showed like the layout of it, which I thought was awesome. on Instagram but it might have been on Facebook too I'm not on it so I don't know. Hillary oh I was just curious to know like I as a parent I've gotten a lot of emails um, asking for like additional people who might want to sign up for this so I was just wondering if um, like I remember at the beginning of when we first heard about this from Todd, he was saying that he thought he had most of the spots filled with interested people from community services. So I guess I was wondering if they increased the number of um, kids who could who who could be in the space, or if um, some of those people maybe had already found other childcare and didn't sign up for it. I don't have that answer to that question. I'm sorry. Yeah. I've not heard about that. I just know they certainly um, added 10 more spaces and it could be because they wanted to uh, fill it up even more, but I, I, I could try to get that answer to you. Thanks, Sandy. Yep. Okay, any other questions? All right, moving into the chair's report. Um, just wanted to give a reminder to the community that for the month of October with early voting, um, we will be remote. So we'll be back in chambers come November. Um, we heard about this during Sandy's overview, but I really want to thank administration again for the district newsletter. It's fantastic. The format is excellent. Um, love the consistency of getting it every Friday. I think that's great. And knowing that it's going to be the same at all phase levels, I think that's going to be super handy for the parents as well. Um, great place to have all that information in one area. And lastly, as we look at a month into school being opened, I really want to thank the parents who have just been phenomenal with the pickups and the drop-offs and um, their willingness to be supportive and flexible as we go through this. From everything that I have seen, and yes, I'm occasionally down there just watching it happen, it seems to be going like clockwork. Um, so really am grateful for everybody's cooperation in this, um, working through something totally different. And it appears to be going super well. So thank you for all of that. All right, moving into committee reports. Communications. So the Thanks, Leanne. The communications committee met on Tuesday. Um, it was a reconvening after taking a break for the summer. Uh, so we talked about our priorities and what our board um, communication really needs to be for the fall. And obviously right now in front of us, the biggest thing we have as a board is that we have an election coming up. Um, and so I put this up as a reminder to anybody that's watching that we do have two school board seats that are on the ballot this November, um, and there are three town council seats on the ballot. And I also wanted to say thank you to the Scarborough Chamber of Commerce for hosting Candidates Night on Monday. Uh, if there is anyone who did not have the opportunity to watch, it was an excellent way to um, hear from each of the candidates. Um, and so I did include a link there if anybody would like to um, watch or rewatch um, any portion of candidates tonight. 
um, upcoming for the communications committee. We are going to be um, talking more about how we can be a part of the district newsletter, which is a hot topic for tonight. Um, but we had talked to Diane and Sandy about having a small reoccurring um, space in that newsletter where we could just pop in meeting dates or quick announcements um, and really kind of just be a constant um, reminder to the community what we're up to. And then last but not least, certainly, um, is the return of recognitions and the Spotlight Award. And our next meeting is next Tuesday, October 6th at 1 o'clock. Thank you. I'm looking excited about the Spotlight Award coming back. Negotiations? Um, so there's not too much going on with negotiations since the um, contracts that were up this year have been um, ratified, but the SEA did request um, a memorandum of understanding, which is commonly referred to as an MOU or an MOA, um, regarding the special circumstances that surround the school year because of all of the changes that have been made for um, um, in response to COVID. So we are in the midst of negotiating that um, over Zoom, which is why I decided to put a picture of Zoom. That's me in the middle. Thank you. And our senior, Max. Awesome, we're back. It's been a while since I've done one of these. It's kind of fun. Um, so for the for our first slide, this, so there really isn't much to talk about yet. You know, we just got back, but um, school has started as we all know, and it's actually been going really well. Here are some photos from my first day. You can see uh, me sitting on my car, which I do not recommend. It's kind of dangerous. And then, my senior shirt and I decorated my car, which is a tradition. And um, I'm in cohort A. So my first day wasn't actually until the 15th, which was like a lot later than other people. But, you know, it was okay. We were all glad to be back. And actually, surprisingly enough, after so many people had said, like, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be so weird. You're going to have such a bad school year. Like, first of all, thanks for projecting so much negative energy on me. But also, it's been really... It's been really good. I think like being back in the building and like we might have to sit three feet apart and like we might have to distance, but it doesn't feel like that. Like it feels really good to all be back together and like being able to interact with people that I haven't seen in like six plus months. So that's awesome. So that's everything for this slide. All right. So the high school recently held class elections for their new officers and student council representatives. So Congrats to all of the new student leadership. And also speaking of new leadership, with our current trajectory, we will be holding elections for our new junior representative to the school board next week. And we will hopefully have our new member on the 15th. So that's really exciting. I'm running the election, um, which has astoundingly nine candidates. There are nine people running, which is crazy um, and stressful because there are a lot of people that I have to talk to about this position um <laughs> but they're going to be submitting speeches and i'm going to be presenting those to the student council and the um all of the class officers and then that's how the voting is going to be happening so that's everything Excellent. all right moving into a new business yeah yes i i did want to give a policy update oh, i'm so sorry that's okay, I didn't have a slide, but um, um, I thought it would be helpful given the fact that we're hoping for first reading um, coming up. So um, on the policy committee is Leanne, April and I, and Sandy and Diane join us. Um, we've, we uh, sometimes need to ask some of our um, district experts to come in and give us some advice or bring us up to speed in terms of district practice so that we are really informed in how um, the issues play out. We took a break um, following COVID because it, it was um, time sensitive. We did feel like um, uh, the administrators were best served meeting the imminent needs of, of COVID. But um, Diane took a webinar recently about Title IX changes and 
that is something that um, we do need to address uh, pretty quickly by the board. Uh, there were statutory changes involving harassment and sexual harassment of um, both students or employees. The policies are currently at Drummond Woodsum. Uh, there's uh, one of the changes is that it now allows for a formal Title IX complaint process. Um, we've had some discussions. We invited, um, as I think you're all aware, there is a, a, a body that is um, uh, includes Scarborough High School alum, alum, alums, um, as well as potentially, I think, current students who are interested in um, discussing and making changes about uh, sexual harassment and sexual assault. So we did reach out to that group and invited them, or I guess not a formal invitation, informed them that the meeting was occurring and that we were having discussions related to um, their interests. So we did have a representative from that group attend and um, we were happy about that. Um, so the, the, those policies are currently at the attorneys as is the um, child abuse reporting policy. And once those policies are returned, we will be presenting them to you for first reading. What you can expect from the child abuse um, reporting uh, policy is that it does include a mandatory sexual abuse prevention curriculum for our students. So that's gonna be something new. Um, and I'm sure you'll have lots of questions about that. Um, so we'll, we'll have it um, as soon as they can turn it around. Thanks, thanks, uh, Liam. Yeah, thank you, Osha. Um, and while we're talking about policy, thank you so much for going through those um, in depth as you have. They were intense, as you can imagine, um, very, very large ones. Um, so thank you for taking all that time to go through them and to prepare them for us. All right, 10.1, motion to accept the meeting minutes of the August 20th, 2020 meeting as presented earlier. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? And we can vote. Mrs. Jurgen. Yes. Mrs. Gipshos. Yes. Bill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Right. Motion passes. 10.8 uh, are our appointments. 10.8.1 is a special education teacher for a one year position. Sandy, did you want me to read that or would you like to? Be happy to do it if that works okay. for you. Okay, Absolutely. so Susan Wood has been selected to fill this position created by a resignation. Ms. Wood received a Bachelor of Art degree in Natural and Applied Science from the University of Southern Maine, where she also earned her Master's of Science in Education from the Extended Teacher Ed Program at USM. Ms. Wood has been a Special Ed Tech 3 in the Resource Room at the Middle School for seven years, and for the last 12 years has been a Sped Ed Tech three at the high school. Ms. Wood would be placed on step one of the master's plus 15 scale. The recommendation is to appoint Susan Wood, a middle school special ed teacher, a one year position. Motion to approve as presented. So moved. So moved. Second. And any discussion? Ready to vote. Mrs. Durgan? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. If there's no objections, I'd like to put 10.8.2, the middle school fall coaches, and the 10.8.3 Jim Danny's instructors into one motion. And it's a motion to approve as presented earlier. So moved. Second. 
in any discussion? Ready to vote. Mrs. Durgan? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Motion passes. April? Um, before you motion to adjourn, um, can I give my liaison report updates? Oh my gosh, yes. I'm so sorry. I, I, I My fault, you guys. When the screens were off, I assumed that that meant you didn't want to give them. <laughs> so yes, April, sorry. No worries. <laughs> Um, so I have two. Um, I wanted to let everyone know that the vocational committee um, just released their schedule for the upcoming season or upcoming school year rather of meetings. Um, and those will be convening over Zoom um, beginning October 15th. So I will have an update for you um, next time we do committee reports. Um, and then I also have a town council um, update to give, which is that the town council is looking to fill two ad hoc committees. Um, the first of those committees is the Downtown Development Committee. Um, so they are looking for individuals to fill roles who are um, interested in being on the Downtown Development Committee. They are also looking to fill um, a charter review committee. And applications for interested individuals can be found on the town website. It's right on the first page right now under New Town News. Um, or I'm sure you could reach out to anyone on the town council um, if you needed assistance in filling those out. Um, so interested parties, please do that. Great, thank you. Okay, now I'm done. <laughs> thank you. Um, is there anything else that I've missed tonight? <laughs> Making sure. <laughs> All right, in that case, 11.0 is a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. And we're ready to vote. Ms. Durkin? Yes. Mrs. Giftos? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Scyther? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. And Mr. Bennett? Yes. Great. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Good night. Good night. Thank Bye. you.